everyone, my name is Brad Langdale, and I want to help you through some net force problems. These are out of the textbook we use in Physics 20, and the first one's on page 132, it's number one. All right, so we got two dogs, A and B. They're pulling a sled across a horizontal snowy surface. Dog A is going to uh, apply a force of 200 newtons forward. All right, let's make a free body diagram for this. So 200 newtons forward is our first force. Uh, dog B is going to apply a force 150 newtons forwards. Okay, so I'm going to draw that in there as well. And I am making my vectors tip to tail. Uh, the force of friction on the sled is 60 newtons backwards. Maybe I want to make that a little shorter because we're making these free body diagrams, folks. We've got to make sure they're more or less relative to the magnitude they should be. And very important, if it's going backwards, that force needs to be a negative number. All right, so it says that we also have uh, the driver trying to slow down by putting a force on the sled of 100 newtons backwards. So I'm going to put another vector in there, 100 newtons backwards, you know, a little shorter, hopefully, than some of those other ones. Okay, pretty good. Not bad. Okay, so what's the net force? So now that we've got our free body diagram worked out, which helps us get the directions down, our net force statement for this first one is pretty easy. It's a 1D situation, and it's just a matter of totaling up the forces acting on the sled. Because at the end of the day, that's what net force means. It means total up all the forces you have. And I think the key here is just making sure that if you have any forces going left, that you are making them negative numbers, sort of like this, okay? So if I total all of those up, I'm gonna get 190 Newtons. It's a positive number when I total it, so that means it's gonna be going to the right. Okay, well, let's try another one here. Uh, the next problem we're gonna try out here is a tractor pull. Uh, we got four tractors connected by strong chains. Uh, the load is at rest to start off with, this thing we're gonna pull. A and B pull with 500 Newtons north, uh, sorry, Newtons east, and 4,000 Newtons east. So let's draw that out. All right, so I'm gonna say that amount is gonna be 5,000 Newtons. Try to squeeze another zero in there. And then another one a little shorter of 4,000 Newtons. Uh, now the next one here, C and D, we're gonna go uh, 4,500 West and 3,500 West. So I don't know, maybe that's about 3,500 West and maybe about 4,500 Newtons west as well. I'm gonna put a negative sign on each of those to show they're going in the west direction. Now, the interesting thing about this one is it doesn't, it says there's gonna be friction. There's a, a magnitude, so we don't know how, what direction, but we know the size of the friction is 1,000 Newtons. And the question is, well, which way does the force of friction go? I'll make the force of friction red. So what I need to think about is, if there is no friction, which way would this object move? Okay, so let's think our totals so far. Okay, going in total to the right or to the east, we have 9,000 Newtons of force. And so far, going in total to the west, we have a little bit less. We have in total eight, negative 8,000 Newtons. So if there were no friction, this object that the tractors are pulling would move to the right. Okay, it would move to the west. Uh, pardon me, to the east. But uh, since we do have friction here, friction is going to try to like move against and, and try to slow this object down, keep it from moving. So that means that force of friction I'm going to have going to the left or the west in this question. That's my force of friction. So now if I was to think about what my net force is, okay, so my net force, the total of all the forces acting here, well, you can probably just look at it from the numbers we've got up here. I've got 1,000 Newtons to the right. I've got, sorry, 9,000 Newtons to the right. I've got a total of negative 9,000 Newtons to the left. I have no overall net force. So this object is gonna stay at rest. And that's what they're talking about in question B. If the load is at rest, will it start moving? No, even though there's forces acting on it, we are going to have exactly the same amount of force in either direction. So according to Newton's first law, the object at rest will stay in rest because there is no overall net force acting on it. Okay, there's a couple of 1D situations. Uh, let's look at a 2D situation. So this is a neat one. Uh, the, the 
page 134, number one, asks you to look at the picture they have uh, from a previous question and then make some changes and solve it. So you can go through and look at this example in the textbook on page 134 to see how they do it. I'm going to show you a little bit of a different way to do it by adding these vectors using a little animation. Uh, so we're going to add together here. Um, let's see, what are we going to add? We're going to add uh, 60 newtons of force uh, from these two people pulling on a canoe. One of them is going to be at an angle of 40 degrees, kind of going up. So instead of 20 degrees in this picture, we're going to do an example with 40 degrees. And the other person is going to pull down at 20 degrees. Uh, I guess that one stayed the same. And we're going to figure out what the net force is. Now, in this case, we can't just go and add these two numbers together. It's not just 60 plus 60 is 120. We need to do this in a 2D analysis, just like we did back in the first unit, where we're going to actually add these two vectors together using a ruler and protractor. But it's really hard to do a ruler and protractor here um, without uh, you know, actually being in person with you. So there's a cool little thing you can try on the FET website. Uh, there's a vector addition animation. And that might be kind of neat to use the, uh, for this one here. So I'm going to flip over to that, uh, hopefully. And I'm going to see if we can check this out. So let's see. Just like we can draw out vectors tip to tail with a ruler and protractor to scale, this animation lets us do a pretty decent job. It's not perfect, but a pretty decent job of doing the same thing. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vector. And that vector is going to be uh, at 40 degrees, okay, kind of up like this. 40 degrees, and I'm going to make it 60 newtons. Except that, you know, just like in real life, 60 doesn't fit onto this page. So I'm going to divide uh, and make it 20 newtons. Okay, I'm going to divide it by three. Uh, annoyingly, I can't get it exactly bang on. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be a little bit off. 40 degrees and 20, I can get it as close as about that. 40.9 degrees and 19.8. It, it's going to be okay. Just like when we're drawing with a ruler and protractor, we try to be as accurate as possible, but we might be a little tiny bit off. It'll be okay. Uh, the next vector we're going to do is going to be going kind of down, as we can see here, okay, like that, 20 degrees from the horizontal, and it's also going to be 60 newtons. So let's see if I can put another vector in there here. Okay, so I want to go down 20 degrees, and I'm going to make it also 20 newtons long or as close as I can get it. Again, it might not be perfect, but I think it's going to be pretty close. So those are my first two vectors. Now my resultant vector is going to be uh, the tail to tail and tip to tip vector that goes right in here, just like we did back in the first unit. That's the resultant and the resultant in this case is the same as the net force. So let's see if we can find the resultant here. We've got this extra little vector. I'm going to put it so that it's tail to tail. See if I can grab it. Come on, you. OK, maybe I'll move his head first. OK, tip to tip and tail to tail. There we go. So I get an angle of about 10 degrees. And 33.5 is my uh, magnitude. So if I go through and multiply that again by the scale factor, remember I took all the 60 newtons. I divided by 3. I'm going to times it by 3 to get about 100. It's 100.5, but pretty close. So my resultant here, my net force, is about 100 newtons. And it's at about 10 degrees in the RCS system. So that's a lot like just adding vectors like we were doing in the past uh, in unit A. But now instead of finding the resultant, we're finding something called a net force, very similar. There's another example here that I'm going to have you try and work through as well. So give that one a shot. You can draw, draw it with a ruler and protractor if you have one at home. You can go through and try this animation if you want. It works kind of nicely as you saw. But I'm going to th go through one last one with you here. Uh, There's a little bit of a trickier one, um, but it's a good one for us to practice. So it says to minimize the environmental impact of uh, building a road through a forest, a logger uses a team of horses. Uh, so uh, I'll draw a really, really poor horse. Oh boy, this is not going as well as I hoped. Okay, looks like a reindeer, that's fine. Kind of a horse. And it's pulling two logs. So a log A and a log B. And it's got a rope tied around it to pull these logs. Uh, they give the mass of the logs. It says that A is 150 kilograms. 
and it says that B is 250 kilograms. So I'm just going to label that on my diagram. Uh, and then it says that the horses pull with a combined force of 2,600 newtons. So I might call that like an applied force. Force APP stands for force applied of 2,600 newtons. And it says the force of friction on both of these logs is 2,400 newtons. So here's what I'm doing in my free body diagram. I'm saying that the force of friction is negative 2,400 newtons. Now I'm not worrying about like normal force or force of gravity here because the motion is gonna be horizontal. It's not going to be vertical. And the normal forces and force of gravities would just cancel out anyways if I added them together. So I'm really just worried about the um, horizontal forces here. I'm worried about the forces that are collinear to one another. All right, so now what we're gonna do is find the acceleration of the logs. That's different. We haven't found acceleration uh, with one of these net force problems before. But it's not that hard to do. Let me show you how you do this. So first things first, I'm just gonna do a, a little net force calculation. Okay, so I'm gonna write net force equals, and I'm gonna write down the forces that I have in this question. So I have force of friction and I have applied force like that. And that's my net force statement. That's the place that we wanna start off here, okay? Uh, it looks so important, I'm thinking I'm gonna kind of highlight it. You wanna start off with your net force statement. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to put in place of net force, the total of the masses in this question. So all of the logs together, I guess are gonna be uh, 400 kilograms, okay? Net force, just like net force means total of the forces, here we're gonna be total of the masses. And we're gonna get here an acceleration. So what I've done is I've replaced net force with mass times acceleration. I'm basically just using Newton's second law, right? F equals MA. And replacing the force with MA in my net force statement. Now I'll substitute in all my forces from the question. All right, so I have negative 2,400 Newtons for the force of friction and 2,600 Newtons for the applied force. So 200 Newtons of net force on the right-hand side of the equation, a 400 kilograms times acceleration on the right-hand side of the equation or left-hand side. So when I divide both sides by 400, I get 0 0.500 meters per second squared as the acceleration of the logs together. And so that's not too bad to do. I mean, uh, aside from just taking the net force, which we had here, and dividing it by the mass, kind of the same as what we've been doing in the last couple of problems. Now part B is really interesting. Uh, it says, if the force of friction on log A is 900 Newtons, calculate the force exerted by B on A. This is a tricky one. So I'm gonna make a new free body diagram for it. So here's log A, it's 150 kilograms. And it has some forces acting on it. Let's make a free body diagram, think about what's pulling on this log. Well, it has that applied force from the horses still of 2,600 Newtons, all right? And it has some friction on it. It says the force of friction on just this log. Now, not both like together, uh, not together like a moment ago, but just the 150 kilogram log A is 900 Newtons. I'm gonna make that force of friction going to the left because it's gonna slow down that log. Now, there's also another force on that log. There's the force that B is applying to A, I'll call that force of B on A. And I don't know what that is. That's the unknown in this question. So how am I gonna figure out what this force is? I'm gonna do it with a net force statement. So here we go. Whoops, net force equals, what do we have for forces? We have the applied force, we have the force of friction, we have the force of B on A, which is our answer. So you can have more than two forces together in a net force statement, no problem. Now, what am I gonna put in place a net force? Well, that same sort of idea as before, mass times acceleration. So the mass now, since I'm only talking about log A, is gonna be 150 kilograms. And the acceleration of log A, we just figured out in the last question at 0 0.500 meters per second squared. It's gonna have the same acceleration as it did a second ago. That hasn't changed. The applied force is 2,600 Newtons. The force of friction is negative 900 Newtons. And the force of B on A 
is what we're gonna solve for. So if I go through and solve here, I'm gonna multiply the 150 and the 5, 0.5 together. I'm gonna to subtract from both sides, 2600 and add 900. I get for the force of B on A to sig digs to work out to negative 1.63 times 10 to the three Newtons. Now, if you wanna see maybe a little neater way of working that out, you can also check out the key in the answers uh, in the back of the booklet. Um, or if you need some more help, you can send me an email. So I hope that helped. And um, for more information on these topics, please check out my website, ldindustries.ca.